Merch shop is open! And I have Patreon with tears and stuff if you wish to support me. Shout out to Brad, my biggest patron. Video time! Enjoy! Time. Time is an enemy. People usually play for four hours a week. Conjure animals is taking too much time to move to place, to roll, to whatever. We have to optimize their approach to effectively make conjure animals only take seconds. It's quite easy. Welcome to Pack Tactics. Let's quickly read the spell. You summon face spirits that take the form of beasts and appear in an unoccupied space that you can see within range. Choose one of the following options for what appears. We are interested in the eight beasts. The summoned creatures are friendly to you and your companions. Roll initiative for the summoned creatures as a group, which has its own turns. They obey any verbal commands that you issue to them, no action required by you. The DM has the creature's statistics. Sample creatures can be found below. Upcasts using certain higher level slots will give you more animals, basically. You can read it yourself. The player picks the animals because usually when spells don't say who picks, the player gets to do it instead. An example is Polymorph. It reads, this spell transforms a creature that you can see within range into a new form. It doesn't say who picks, but everyone agrees that the player picks. So we apply that same logic to conjure animals. Besides, it's quicker if the player picks. Nobody protested in the polymorph video, so let's apply it to conjure animals as well. You control the animals on their turn. Now me and my friends don't have any problems controlling the animals as is, and why is that? It's simple, we talked about the spell when we pick it up, or pick the class that can potentially get this. The reason why conjure animals for others is taking forever is because the player or the DM or both didn't prepare for it. They didn't have a conversation. This bewilders me. This is a communication game. Everyone planned for the time of day to play. Everyone created their character sheet and planned how to use it and how to role play. The DM knows what classes everyone is and what their levels are, but didn't prepare a small selection of random animals? And the same goes for the player who literally picked the spell and just assumed the DM had it prepared. Who is at fault here? I can tell you it's not the spell at all. If you as a player ambushed a DM with this, that reads as a DM versus player mentality. And it shows. That is not good. Everyone is going to be angry, and that's not what you want. You want people to be super happy. Like everything in this game, when you do anything in D&D, you plan for it, and that includes planning for the animals. It's not hard. Look at Conjure Animals chart sample for one-fourth CR. All of those options are very good animals. Prepare them for the DM just in case worst case happens where he forgot you had this or something. There's a reason why by design, that small sample list is there in the spell itself. It's for in case there's a slip up. I wish they put page numbers for the animals there too, but oh well. Now, practical play. There's many ways to make it quick. Some of them are brews and alternative rules like handling mobs on page 250. I don't like alternative rules. I just roll normally and that's what my DM favors too. Now, this lasts an hour. That's basically a whole dungeon crawl. So before combat begins, you can just say you cast this and put down the animals. That in itself saved some time. It didn't hinder anything. The players are probably role-playing or thinking anyways. I usually cast this in combat, but this is what you can do if you want to save time. I pick cows for the memes. Cows are awesome. I suggest you send them far ahead to trigger traps and make sure they're the first thing the enemy sees so they fight them rather than you and your friends. In general, you shouldn't care what happens to these animals. If they get AoE blasted to death and you got no use out of it, at least you know there's an enemy who has AoE in that encounter. And all of you will know that that enemy is the biggest threat of the fight. If you have a problem with tight spaces, just say squeeze rules. People forget that rule often. I get it. It doesn't come up often. Entering combat, you roll initiative as normal. I play on roll 20, so I click each individual animal to roll. It doesn't take long. That applies to all game programs, really, when you know it. And I suggest you spend time knowing the program if you're gonna use it. 
my way of just clicking each individual animal is slower, but no one complains, so it's not a problem for us. To make it even easier for you, you can ask the DM if you can make it so all the animals share the same initiative. That's even quicker. Some DMs allow it. You have the sheet open, just say they charge and attack and press this 8 times or 16 times or when it's their individual turn or whatever. Look at what hits, do the damage and add it up and tell it to the DM. This is probably where people struggle the most. So the other alternative to go even quicker is just to go with average damage of the creature. So the cows, for example, both charge and gore does 7 damage on average. If 5 cows hits with charge, that's 70 damage. All you did was roll attack and read the average damage. Easy. You can make the attacks even quicker too. Trent Monk uses macros. He was playing a game with the dungeon dudes using this spell and he conjured 16 velociraptors and his turn went quick. No one complained. I asked him if he could share his macros to you guys and he did. The video where he uses this spell effectively time wise and linked to his macros is down below. You can pretty much snag them from for yourself. They might not be perfect, but they should be good enough like it was for him. But then again, he made the thing, so he understands it. Spend some time on it. Watching the video, the first time he casts it, it takes him one minute to say his character stuff, 30 seconds to put down his animals, and then one minute to do all the macros and calculates the damage. That's two minutes and 30 seconds. That's like taking a regular turn for normal play. If you don't believe me, time the other players here in this video and see how long they take their turn compared to Chris. Now obviously some fights are more complex where you don't know what the solution is, but the animals are so straightforward. Walk forward and attack, don't think, just do. If you're not sure what to do hypothetically, then just surround the enemy or make a wall and dodge. It takes a second to say dodge and move from there. It's still optimal to do. There's a high chance that the creatures are going to attack the dodging animals anyways or trigger opportunity attack. So you're going to get the benefit of the spell. New scenario, let's say hypothetically the players are bored because you're taking too long with the animals or you can't handle controlling this many units. Give them control of some of the animals then. Yes, now it's a brew made by a player. That's very taboo. But is the DM really going to say no? I can't imagine a DM shutting down teamwork like that. From there, no one is really waiting their turn. Everyone is playing on the animal's turn and thus playing the game. That's what everyone wants to begin with. More cool world! I want to play my character, not these animals. Ugh. That's okay. Let me play my character who's using this spell right now. And you can spend however much time you want on your turn. If you want to help me control these animals with me, you are welcome to it, my friend. Anytime. Now, obviously, as people take their turns and do things, you should be planning your next move and take the actions quickly. You shouldn't be on your phone. If anything, it should be a calculator or an app for rolling dice. Now again, I use roll 20. If you play at a real table with dice and paper, I can imagine controlling this will be harder. That is a legit case. The argument here is unknown to me, but to give you some ideas, use coins as animal tokens and use technology to your advantage. Download a dice app. It doesn't need to be a good one, just d20 plus whatever stats for rolling attacks and just go with average damage. Also, I use stickies and a pen to track HP and stuff. I don't think I can play D&D without sticky notes, really. Write down animal stat blocks where it's easy to find. You know more than me, I haven't been at a table in like four years. I live in a cave in the middle of nowhere. Lastly, and this isn't related to speed, but I'm sick of getting these comments. It's about immune to non-magical attacks. Here's what you do. Grapple the target and move him. His speed is zero. He has to spend an action to break free or kill the animal. Killing the animal also costs an action, so that's a win. This is called control. You're wasting his turns on other things and not your friends. If you think this is bad, then you think web is bad. Then you think hypnotic pattern is bad. Then you think banish is bad. Like, like you think every control spell is bad. You think grapple is bad. I do not understand. These are 8 or 16 or more animals doing grapples and people think this is bad compared to a grappler build. <laughs> oh yeah, here's my grapple build. It's just a bunch of animals. They're, they're gonna grapple for me. <laughs> 
Another tip for you, you can grapple an ally and move him away from the enemy. This counts as forced movement, so it doesn't trigger opportunity attack. I think we're at the end of the video. It's straightforward as that. You have to talk to the DM if you're going to plan to cast a spell. You also have to plan it yourself just in case worst case happens. It's mandatory. You can't ambush your DM with conjure animals. That's being a bad player. Really, really, really bad. You get the point. Tabletop builds will extend this list, but will probably take a while. Once it's out, I'll link it. Anyways, bye-bye.